You're in the wrong channel, Craig. Nee, me, nee, nee, nee. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I was in the wrong channel. That's why it wasn't working. Never mind. Hi, Greg. Hi, Grumpy Dungeon Master Jay. Well, hello, Grumpy Dungeon Master Christopher. Did you call him you know, Greg? You called him Greg again. I don't care. <laughs> All right. No, no love. No love for Craig. <laughs> none. Absolutely none. No chill. <laughs> So, uh, what the hell is going on with Avengers League? Uh, why are you asking me? You know that's a question you would know the answer way more to, as I've never never run Adventures League. I've never played Adventures League. I've never even seen Adventures League. All right. Well, the last post they have on Twitter, post they have on Twitter, is you from June X. 12th. You mean X? <laughs> Fuck you. Um, <laughs> before that, it was February 21st where they posted that they're going to have the adaptation of Keys of the Golden Vault, right. which I did look today. Still has yet to come out. Oh. Um, and then a couple things where they tried to create engagement. Like, what is what do you think about when you write modules? The module I'm writing. Yeah. What music inspires you when you're writing modules? Um music most of the links they have are broken um because i guess they got rid of like their main site and moved over to young portal or something like that i don't know and the reason why i bring all this up was is because the one thing they have been doing for the past couple of years with varying results okay but at least they were doing it consistently was liar's night Essentially, October, Halloween, and Feyron is called Liar's Night. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. And, you know, they, they've always put out, like, some kind of Halloween module, okay? Okay. A couple of years ago, um, they had this amazing module that they released um, called, uh, let me pull up the name here so I don't get it wrong. Uh called fuzzy tail farm and the frightful candy goat massacre <laughs> that's it was a, an that, that's a good name that's a good name yeah it was a great module um the fey wild had just uh the, the fey wild book had just came out so they used the haragon essentially you're transported to this farm that's basically candy land okay all right so all the goats are like marshmallow goats okay um the barn's like made out of licorice and shit and stuff like that. And you have to basically figure out why the goats are getting massacred on a nightly basis because all the farm hands are just tired reassembling all the goats every single day <laughs> because they're marshmallow goats that keep getting chopped up and they put them yeah, back together. They stick, stick back together. Cause well, they're made of marshmallow. I think I did talk about this when I ran this back in 2020 did, or whatever. Yeah. That's, yeah. Been, that's been years. Yeah. <laughs> So when I ran this the first time, um, the druid that was at the party, or ranger, I can't remember, decided to use speak with animals on the goats that were all chopped up. <laughs> so the second she cast it and tried talking to the goat, I just started screaming at her. Ah! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, that makes sense now. They're all chopped up. And she's like, okay, I dismissed the spell. I'm going to concentrate on it. I was like, nope, it stays. Yeah. So the entire time she's getting traumatized by these goats screaming at her. My goat bleating very, very loudly. Um, but like the the module kind of goes a couple weird directions. Like uh like th there's like a, a, a corrupted Haragon that's now a spider that's doing all the killing, but the farm boss is part of an ex mob and the mob is trying to kill him at the same time. So there's a couple awesome things you can do with it yeah um and that was a module they put out a couple years ago okay um a couple years even before that uh in 2019 they had something called liar's night 2019 where you could earn candy corn for defeating wandering monsters that, they, that you would basically supplement into God. the modules okay i remember um, you telling me about this and uh and the fact that you get candy corn that because we've definitely discussed it on here at some point who the fuck would want that who <laughs> well you know who wants it 
the garbage. Colonel the rat. No, Colonel <laughs> the rat. Um, some call him the Candy King. Other call him the Sugar Fiend, but most know him as the Colonel. Uh, this cranium rat, Kingpin, was run out of water deep by peppermint dragons who stole the candy corn horde. He since rebuilt his sugary empire in Baldur's Gate. The Colonel will trade your candy corn in exchange for his Lair's Light, Lair's Night, sorry, Liar's Night, Liar's Night loot. Um, and you get some awesome things. You get a Dread Helm. Um, you can get a cauldron that makes potions for you. Uh, a hat of witchery. Uh, a Lemure onesie. <laughs> oh, I'm all I'm all for a Lemure onesie. Uh, and Fritter, the se- second le- the seven legged spider. Um, so like if you fight all the waves and defeat them all, you you get candy corn and you can buy stuff. Um, and they have like all these different monsters that kind of go with it. Um, I know we didn't talk about this at all. Um, in wave one, there's the pesky pumpkins. <laughs> All right. Uh, and the invisible man Ticor. Oh, no. More and more, the Manticore dislikes being called a monstrosity, even if it was his scientific categorization. Quite vain, Mortimer traded his wings away to a devil who promised uh, no one would be would, no one would see Mortimer's flaws. Unfortunately, Mortimer is now invisible. <laughs> Furious at being tricked, he terrorizes Liar's Night with random and irresponsible violence. <laughs> <laughs> so random and irresponsible violence. So he's just acting like nearly every actual D and D party. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a black cat beholder <laughs> who, uh, let's see, what's the CR? CR 13. Yeah. So that's, that's a, that's, oh, that's a horrific that's random legit, encounter. Yeah. Um, there is, uh, let's see here. Uh, the Lemur onesie for all. Uh, where you have to fight a bunch of Varghouls in lemur onesies. They're wearing um, it or you're wearing it? They're wearing it. Oh, uh, that's even worse. Right. Uh, the lemur onesie is a wondrous item, uncommon. This comfortable fleece onesie is complete with uh, cozy, if amorphous, footsies. <laughs> when wearing this onesie, you make yourself, including belongings on your person, appear as a lemur. The uh, the appearance uh, fails to hold up to physical inspection. To discern you are disguised, a creature can use its action to inspect your appearance and must succeed on an intelligence investigation check of DC-13. The fabric is inexpensive and quite flammable. <laughs> While wearing this onesie, you have vulnerability to fire damage. Oh, all right. <laughs> so it's the, the most absolute useless item. You look like a horrific blob, so the towns are going to want to burn you. And then you have affordability to fire oh, damage. That's worse than the guy who was in uh, Icewind Dale that was dressed up like a teddy bear. Yeah. Um, and the last monster for the last wave, because there's four waves, one for each week, is a young peppermint dragon. And I think we talked about that because I actually fought that. Probably. And beat the crap out of it because it kept trying to fly away and I kept using um, uh, my uh, action to... Uh, basically knock it prone with my shield. So, yeah. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We're going we're gonna to run these for AL during this month. Okay. Um, so, you're, and, so you're running stuff from 2019. 2019 and 2020, yeah. Right. So things from years ago that have already been run. I mean, it you know, might be different players who are getting to experience it. It's very it, much but... different players. Um but it's more I, of the fact of they haven't released anything new. Now, even in even in 2021 and 2022, they had like a pick your own adventure guide that was a bunch of tweets that they put out. Mm-hmm. So you'd click through and you'd have to choose where to go and you would get items that you could use during playing Witchlight. Um, but they weren't very fun. Um well, I, I that, that's my opinion. It wasn't very fun. Yeah. It was creative, but um, a choose your own path via Twitter. That's that's not a module I can run for people, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. So whatever. Yeah, that, yeah, that sounds like they just half-assed it. Uh, you know, why why actually hire writers to write something good? Uh, you can just hire them for less money and just have them write a, a tweet. <laughs> Right. 
So um, it, it was interesting, but not that great. It. So I'm just disappointed. I'm I'm really disappointed that there's literally no support for Ventures League anymore. Um, everyone's writing their own stuff and posting it to DMs Guild, which is great. You know, yeah. I, I like that the fact that people are making more content. Um, but it's unregulated and it's uncontrolled. Yep. Nothing stops you from creating a DMs Guild release that's eventually league legal I mean, and throwing in just beholders on the on day one and you know holy adventures yeah. on day two like yeah at least anything that's coming through watsi has been play tested it's you know it, it's going to be at least remotely balanced uh whereas we we start you know pulling things off the dm's guild where literally anybody can write anything they want that's when you end up with the chronomancer <laughs> mm-hmm. which we've we've discussed uh, in depth on here and it was an absolute nightmare yeah so, I mean, I, I really hope that, that in 5.5 there's a big push to do some more things. Um, they didn't do anything with uh, the Shattered Obelisk and, and the Lost Minds of Fendelver revamp. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and they had a good opportunity saying, hey, we're, we've come full circle, you know, let's, you know, go out with a bang. But I, yeah, I don't know. More, yeah, like I said, you, I... I you get I just make all these comments. Things. Yeah, I just make all these comments too, not knowing any kind of business acumen on the back end. I've gone to the Discord. There's a couple moderators, but I don't see like anyone that's like official talking about anything. You know, it's just it's just a sad state that it's in. You know. Yeah. Um, like we knew when we knew when they were getting prepped for five five to come out that everything would slow down. We knew that for sure because. Why write all this content when you're releasing a new ish edition and some of it might not even be valid? You know, I'm sh- like the books have continuously had lower and lower and lower sales going forward, especially from the point that it was that 5.5 was announced. Yeah. So, so I, I get them not wanting to invest a ton of money into it. Hopefully, once that edition comes out, I think it's next year, uh, once that's released, hopefully they go all in balls to the wall and release a lot of stuff. I'm not counting on it. I figure they'll probably stick with the four books a year, you know, three of which are basically useless uh, that they've been going with, but you never know. Yeah. And the sales numbers are really kind of shocking too. When you think about it, Um, as of what was it? 2023. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. July 26th, 2023. Um, the player's handbook was sold 1.563, so 1.6 million times. The starter set sold over a million times. Now, are these, are these bookstores or are these including Amazon? I don't know. It's RTD sales. So yeah, retail stores. Uh, Yeah. Okay. Cause the, the number, I hadn't ever seen anything including online sales. Um, but you can still get a pretty solid idea of what has sold. Um, yeah. So I would say probably double that number for actually what has sold. Yeah, I'd give it 30%. Eh. Um, Either way. The the, the, the sorry, said a, a million. The, the, the Dungeon Master's Guide sold 823,000 copies. The Monster Manual sold 780,000 copies. Why? Why would the Monster Manual be selling less than the dm's guide uh well some people get things for christmas and they don't know that they need this other book um some people decide that they don't want to be a dungeon master some people just want to yeah, look that's, at the, that's, you know, that's some, why some people look at the magic items <laughs> that's why i figured the uh the monster manual be would be higher um no, no i knew no there was no way it was going to be higher uh, people will buy the dm's guide and you know a lot of the monster stuff you can just quickly find online um, but yeah, uh, anyway. So the, uh, the essentials kit sold over 500,000 copies. Xanathar was 500,000 copies. Um, and that's all the image shows right now. Um, oh no, I've, single, seen, I've seen the, more than that. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. yeah. The single best selling adventure was Curse of Strahd. Yeah. And not, not even surprising. <laughs> out of the abyss and Waterdeep dungeon, the mad mage sold 75,000 copies. Just 
I don't know. It's weird too. Like I, I don't know. I know things have been going down. Um, and these, and these figures don't have like the current books, but I'm, I'm very curious as like, you know, how well they are doing, how well the integration of D and D beyond is going. I know that they're putting a lot more articles out on D and D beyond, but they're not adding anything, you know, for like the different season seasons yet. Yeah. You know, there's no, there's no Halloween adventure going on right now. There um, may not be like that's not you. I know you had seen that before with the adventures league and stuff, but I, I can't say that was ever really a common thing. Like as, as long as I've been a, around D and D, I'm not used to seeing, you know, oh, here's a holiday thing that is official being released. Yeah. The only thing that's up on DMs Guild right now is um, previews of Planescape, mm-hmm. um, an adventure for you to basically play Dungeons and Dragons cross with Minecraft okay. um, to introduce kids to D&D. And they have an article where they talk about the new Minecraft DLC which adds basically the classes to Minecraft with unique weapons and armor. And they add a bunch of monsters like the mimic and mind flares and beholders and okay. gelatinous cubes and stuff. So, I mean, that's at least we're putting content out on D on D and D beyond. I'm very surprised that adventures league hasn't integrated into D and D beyond. Hopefully there's plans for that to happen because it'll make more sense. I'm sure there is. Mm-hmm. Isn't. Well, it's right. there. There's either they're either going to do it or they're just going to stop doing Adventures League altogether. Um, because I mean, that's honestly, my guess. That's that wouldn't guess. surprise me because that's going forward. They're just looking at people to join D and D Beyond to learn and do D and D, which is foolish. Uh, that you know, you'll get people that do that, but you're you know, they're still missing out on a lot of other people who will not do that. Yeah. Um, there's a new uh, Monster Compendium up on D and D Beyond as well too. Okay. Monsters Compendium Volume Four, Eldrain Creatures. Where the, the fuck coincide... is Volume Two? Where, where's Volume Two and Three? <laughs> that came out. Volume oh, okay. Three was the Minecraft monsters, I think. One was Spelljammer. No, two was Spelljammer. One was just a horror monster so, release. So where's the books? That's what we no, care these, about. These are online only, man. Yeah, maybe print books of them and people will buy them. No, you can buy them online for six dollars. Why would I do that? <laughs> I mean, I guess I could I could pay six bucks and print them. But... No, you can't print the indie beyond stuff. There's no way to to get it. I mean, I can all if I really wanted to, I could make it happen. I can screenshot shit and do it that well, way. But... Yes, but be the worst pirate I ever heard of. Oh yeah, it'd be terrible. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do that. Just saying. At least, at least you could go to Five E Tools and like export it from there. Just, <laughs> be a little smart. Don't be the worst pirate ever. Um, but there's 25 fae and fairy, fairy tale creatures. Um, so there's a lot of extra ones, and they all are based off the Wilds of Eldrain MTG release. So I don't mind that that exists. That's a lot of fun. But like I said, D&D Beyond has a lot of content coming out, you know, whether you have to pay for it or otherwise, regardless, they still have content coming out. It's or Adventure just, it, League has it, just died. Yeah, my brain, when you started talking about D&D Beyond, it just went into, uh, like, I, I became Homer Simpson just pushing the button. Like, I didn't hear half of what even came out of your mouth. Well, you got to stop being an old man that yells at the cloud. And that's a pun for me. It's I'm talking about the actual cloud. Um, and just understand that most of the world is online now. And I know you live in Alabama that has a hamster in your, in your router that sometimes dies horribly. Actually, no, but, no, no. We upgraded. We upgraded. <laughs> it's, it's now a groundhog. You got a ground. You got the groundhog. Yep. We got a groundhog now. I got that prairie dog upgrader. <laughs> 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 so you know i know you i know you personally don't look for stuff like that and you want the physical stuff and great so does everybody else yep but you know they're putting stuff out and at least but adventures league i'm just the more it runs by the more i'm just disappointed and the more i just don't want to say i'm running al anymore 
because I'm not. Because if they're not going to fucking do it, why should I fucking do it? I mean, if you have no support, then just say, hey, I'm going to show up on Wednesdays and run some D&D. Yeah, not not Adventures League. Just show up, run some D&D, do it how you want. Run whatever the hell you want with as many players as you want. Well, because- I will after this season, quote unquote, because there's no really there's not really seasons anymore. But since the current book release is the uh, Fandelver and below is the last time they're doing it. We're actually planning on going kind of like balls to the wall with it. Um, we're going to kind of play it like they used to play old Adventure League modules or like there's different factions and you team up with those and, you know, that helps with the storyline altogether and actually have the other AL groups that play at my Zenergy gaming store um, actually like participate in the in a, in a campaign. Yeah. And then at the end of this one, we'll probably call it quits for AL. Um, and maybe rebrand it to something else. I don't know. I still have to talk to the store owner because they, every once in a while, will get something like Avengers League is played here kind of thing because we still punch in that we're playing Adventures League, but there's no content. If we're just supposed to be running the hardcover adventures, that's fine. At least, at least just tell us. Tell us that, that AL is gone to just hardcover adventures, and we'll be fine with that. But at least, like, update the sheets and the and the the guidance that, that reflect these rules you know but there's nothing the last official post on their twitter like i said was um in fucking june yeah. um and in february before that and the last compendium update was in september but that's just because they had to clarify something in regards to making stuff for dm's guild there's been no other updates for what's actually going on with the the modules and event uh organizers and everything like that yeah i mean I, I, if i was running it and there's no support for it i would probably stop running it but that that's me um you know i i it's annoying especially if they are occasionally saying hey here's this thing that says adventures league is run here and that's all you get like that would be that'd be annoying is what it would be and i'd probably still leave and quit doing it yeah but i don't know so i just it's just tiresome that's really what it comes down to yeah it's like why should i put in so much effort when they're not helping at all and i can just do my own thing and run the run the next thing but like i said i got the the facebook page and you know promise to do it just I wish that things actually mattered, you know. Um, the well, the for, last for, mod for, for Watsi it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, the last module that they're actually um, running is a. Uh, I think it's all complete now. It, like it just completed, was the um, the Red Wizards. They had a they had a storyline called uh, Dreams of the Red Wizards. Where some some writer or a bunch of writers are kind of like basically writing this Red Wizards of Thay storyline that's been going on for, for literal years in AL. All like right. that might be interesting. Like pick up all those and run through those. Um, but you know, I, I don't think it's it's worth it. You know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I look. I got nothing to. I got nothing to say. You know. It's. You either keep running it or you don't. Uh, yeah. Also, I just looked at how much it is on the on the freaking DMs Guild. It's a hundred and ten dollars to get the complete adventure bundle. Oh, screw that! Yeah, that's ridiculous. If I'm spending a hundred and ten, uh, if I'm if I, yeah, if I'm spending a hundred and ten bucks, I'm getting you know actual good shit, not not some adventure bundle. Uh, oh well. Anyway, well. Other than that, that's my only thing that I've been doing D&D related. I actually got the stream this weekend. Finished uh, the Haunted Mansion that I was running through. Um, they did well. They didn't die horribly, um, which is nice. But I bet you're glad to be back, you know, actually playing on Saturdays and streaming. It's been, A little how, bit, ma- yeah. it's been how many months? <laughs> two months. It was two yeah. months. That's a, but that's a long it, time. 
It, it is. I mean, real life happens, you know. Yeah, I know. I, like, I, I got to run Pathfinder yesterday, finally, and it, it's been a month since I'd gotten to run it. And it we had multiple incidents over the course of the evening of, wait, what ha- what's happening? Who is this guy? What are we doing? Because, you know, I tried to fill them in, but there's just information that you don't remember from game session to game session if you didn't have yeah. it in the notes and everything. I remember pretty well the the games that I run. Like I remembered very very clearly what we had I, done I, in the manner. I, yeah, as the game master, I had no yeah. problem. I knew everything that was going on, but certain you know a couple of players had forgotten this or that, just little yeah. things. That, all the players forgot why they were in the manor. <laughs> yeah, they all knew they just didn't want to be in it anymore, both in real life and in character. <laughs> yeah, just like yeah, I want to get out of here. This place sucks. The walls are screaming at me. The floor is biting me. The air sucks. I want to leave. Um, and uh, my uh, so when I left them last time, they were pretty beat up. And because they were so beat up and they were gone for a while, I kind of like, forced them to take a long rest mm-hmm. and start off the day kind of fresh and new. Told them exactly what they are they were there for. Um, they basically got this book called the Celestial Codex to rescue this guy named Markov. Um, and to find what out what happened to the other party's adventurers that they sent up there initially, um, and you know, I told them how far they were along with everything, and um, they know they were having a very hard time, and they were fighting monsters that did a lot of psychic damage, and were just aberrations, and they were terrified of the boss that they did, they had a fight, which is this giant ball of hands, okay. That's just fucking weird. Well, it, it's a great monster. Um, it pretty much, like I said, is, is like a flowing ball of hands, kind of like they're all kind of like grabbing a hold of each other and like stretching out and trying to grab other people. <laughs> and <laughs> bad touch, bad touch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they they knew they had to fight that. So my wife, at the end of the pr- last session, um, two months ago, she basically sent a message to this drow lady that they found in a mansion in the middle of nowhere. And they said, Hey, you're all powerful. I've already agreed to help you when I get back to Waterdeep. Can you just like help us out here now with what's, you know, what we're about to fight. And so I had the, the dark lady is the person that I was referring to. I had the dark lady respond and kind of be like, sure. I'm absolutely will be able to help you. Um, if you just pick up this little hand crossbows that I'm that I made just for you <laughs> and use it, uh, you'll be able to be successful in what you have to do and th- be able to defeat the ball of hands. Now, um, I asked her if she wanted to do that. My wife sighed reluctantly, and I figure she also sighed reluctantly <laughs> as her character. She picked up the hand crossbow and I told her the hand crossbow was kind of designed with all these like black scales along like the, the gun handle and the trigger and the, 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 the crossbow like bow part of it had look like kind of like dragon arms. And she's like, I don't know if I want to do this. What hey. if I accept this power, what's going to happen to me? Hey, she's the one who called for help. <laughs> so, I was like, yeah, do you, do you want to attune to it or, or not? And she's like, all right, fine. And she says, so you attune to the weapon. So I gave her one level in Warlock. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I, that's, that's, that's kind of what I want to bring up. Warlock as a class, if I were the DM, and I am, I would basically outlaw Warlock unless someone came up with a really good story as to why they're starting as a Warlock right out of the gate. Um, if you play through Baldur's Gate 3, the warlock that's in there, he has a pretty good story as to why he's a warlock and nothing else, you yep. know? Because you kind of go through the situation the guy as a person, like, why would you just immediately jump to X power when, like, you're already already probably, like, a fighter or something along with, like, the barbarian cleric or something? Why would you jump to just becoming a warlock? They're either going to the demons and fiends or whatever is probably going to, you know, get you early or you're going to stumble upon the power like the genie warlock does. But 
the problem I ran into with this is is that the lady that they are basically becoming a uh um you know a patron of mm-hmm. there is nothing in the warlock list that makes sense okay so you get to make your own well people have already made a, a lot so just just as as an example right now there's the archfey the mm-hmm. celestial the fathomless the fiend the genie the great old one the hexblade the undying and the undead what do you think is missing from that list i haven't got a clue well, think of greater powers in Feyrun that have always existed, beings with, with extraordinary magical powers. What's missing from that list? I mean, I, I could not even begin to tell you. There are one, s- one big monster. It's in the fucking title of the game. Uh, dragons? Dragons. Okay. There is no warlock pack for dragons. There could be. There I'm could not- be. Undy- well, no, I'm just saying Undying could be a dragon that's giving you the powers. Um, well, the, honestly, the, the Fathomless could be a water dragon giving you the powers. Honestly, the Fiend works the best if you just say, hey. If it's an Infernal Dragon, then that no, works. It, no, if you, if, you, if you flavor away all the um, Infernalness and replace it with whatever the color type is, if it's not um any kind of the metals if there are any of the metals you can just go with the celestial and just say you're off of bahamut that makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. um but since tiamat and all the core colors are all based off of her and she's essentially a fiend down there in avernus sure yeah the, the, the fiend makes a lot of sense for the, the the base colors um especially if you just flavor the um the spells from being like you just match the color basis of them. So like, um, every time you throw an elders blast, it appears as five different colors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but well, the spells you white, get white, black, blue, red, and green, <laughs> the spells you get are burning hands, fireball, fire shield, wall of fire. That's very dragonish, you know? Yeah. Because both of them, you know, breathe fire. So <clears throat> she now has a level of warlock and she's on the fiend side. I'm just very surprised that there isn't a dragon one. There is a really cool PDF I found, and I'll put it in our Discord uh, for the dragon, uh, for having a patron that is dragon. Yeah. Um, and I thought it, I thought it would work pretty well. Because um, the thing is, with warlocks, your your patron can just be a powerful variant of literally anything. Yeah. Um, like if some human found a way to be, you know to have incredible magical powers uh they could feasibly become a patron and then hand off some of their powers and thus becoming a patron for a warlock uh and i mean you know, Minx is boo's patron and he has a lot of power because boo is a being of incredible power i don't know about all that but maybe um but yeah like the ones that are already the ones that are already written for 5e that already exist. You can kind of use them for just about anything if you really want to. And if none of those fit the flavor, you can always make your own. But yeah, t- take a look at the, the dragon patron that I, I posted in chat. Um, this is like the first thing I found when I did some Google foo to find it. And it's already a well um, thought out kind of like written out um, way of having a, uh, dragon as a patron um let's see who was the writer for it i know they gave credit someplace on it yeah it was created by the benevolent evil at evil benevolent (laughs) on (laughs) x that's gonna be sad man because the at the at symbol for man twitter twitter's so dead so sad um even though everyone still uses it unfortunately um but yeah it has all the different like spell listings for each of the colors that you would you would bind to um like i said the the it has ones for the metal ones like the brass bronze copper gold and silver mm-hmm. but i honestly would kind of go celestial with those because you know bahamut being a celestial being essentially would they, they kind of works so, i mean you could do either or really um but i do like that uh <laughs> That he they have like the the dragon spells and then for each color there's that one additional spell you get on top of everything. So like you get dragon's breath, 
And if you're black, you get Mel's acid arrow. And if you're red, you also get flaming sphere, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I found this, I write, I liked it a lot. I would have actually done this for my wife uh, and have her like question, why the hell do I have dragon powers now? <laughs> Still not knowing anything about the dark lady at all. <laughs> oh no. I've, I've had a blast with my, uh, so I have one guy who was, he was playing a warlock when we were running 5e. When we converted it over to Pathfinder, they call it the witch. But it's it's almost the same as a warlock. Like you still have your powerful patron that's giving you all of your powers and everything. And he knows very little about his patron. And it's not that he hasn't tried to find out more, but it's, you know, I've intentionally sort of kept it quiet. Um, at some point, he will absolutely get to find out more uh, about who he's working for and things of that nature but it, it's it's fun just sort of keeping that on the down low to because your players want to know more you know, who, who the hell am i working for why do i have these powers surprise joseph joseph Stalin. no yeah yeah i while i personally am not a fan of the warlock class i do like that aspect of it a lot the fact that you work for somebody, you you know, you have to negotiate, and uh, you know, if you want to get more powers, well, you got to keep kind of doing what they want. I just want to know what committee was held to decide that all, every warlock or like the warlock defining feature is going to be Eldritch Blast yeah. and have it be force yeah. damage. Yep. Like Eldritch Blast. So just from the you know the great old one. No, no, no. It works for the fiend too. Yeah, Eldritch Blast. It's it's a it's de- it's a holdover from third edition because that's when the Warlock was introduced. Uh, like eh, in the later part part of third ed, they brought out the Warlock, and that's just what it did. Um, I don't know who came up with that idea. Yeah, for you know, force damage. I don't know. I never felt like force damage was that big of a deal in third edition. Because okay. because it was still a spell, uh, and everything in that game had spell resistance. So, oh, look, it's force damage. Cool, you still didn't beat its spell resistance, so your you know, Eldritch Blast still doesn't do anything to it. Mm, okay. um, so, so from an earlier edition, it wasn't nearly as potent. Um, but then you get into 5e, and well, they don't have spell resistance or anything like that. It's a whole other well, ball game. They, they got resistance, but nothing resistance. Nothing yeah, it, is resistant to force. Yeah, it's it's a whole other. You know, it's a different set of rules. Yeah, which still weirds me out when I'm playing Baldur's Gate three, and I run up to a, like a cracked wall and hit it with my magical great sword, and it says zero damage taken. And then here comes my fucking ranger with a hand cross, but it does force damage, or my wizard that has elder glass and like I hit, pow, no. pow, there goes the wall. I hit a wall earlier today in that game with uh, magic missiles and dealt no damage. Hmm. So, it's, yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, that's not working. Well, they they do have, they do they do really good with um, the sturdiness. Yeah, uh, uh, for it. So like. <sighs> Like objects in D and D in the board in the tabletop, like there's like a, an iron door has a toughness of ten. So if you don't deal any more, you don't deal more than ten damage. The damage doesn't exist. So they have yep. something like that. So they have nothing, medium, and heavy sturdiness. Yeah. And I think heavy sturdiness is like twenty damage you have to break. Oh, I, so. I think it might be medium because I've hit some shit that was that registered as medium toughness for around twenty points and dealt nothing. It, okay. I don't. I don't know the exact numbers in that video game, but th- there are definitely things that are just near impossible to fucking break. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there, there was one door, and I I used the um, the upgraded version of magic missiles, whatever they created yeah. for the game. Yep. Yep. The level six spell that's basically yeah. I, yeah that, it's, horses level, it's, or it, it's actually level five, but yeah. Magic. Magic missile horses essentially <laughs> shot them at a door one time. Yeah, it's like its doors opening right yeah, now. We'll, yeah, we'll have to talk about that spell after the podcast since I don't want to give any spoilers. But it's spoilers. It's they made up their own spells for the game. There <laughs> are a few. There are a few of them. Yes, which I'm perfectly <laughs> fucking okay with, and I would love to actually see those released in actual five E D and D because more spells is good. Did you ever get around to watching the the, the voice actors play? No, D&D? I, mean, I don't have time for that. <laughs> I, 
I'm going to sit here and stream every single episode of the Twisted Metal back to back to back. I'm not going to watch a two hour game session That's with right. the voice actors. Uh, mind you, I watched Twisted Metal over the course of two weeks. So Nerd. I, don't, I don't have time to sit and just binge watch stuff very often. But anyway, yeah, I had that problem today, actually, with my wife. We sat down and watched Evil, Evil Dead, Army of Darkness. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're like, OK, that was cool. And we try to find something else to watch. We're just like, I don't want to watch anything else for the next two hours. Like, I don't want to dedicate two more hours to watching a movie. Yep. But I'll watch like 10 episodes that are 20 minutes long on YouTube. That'll be fine. Like, There's a reason that I go to the movie theaters to watch stuff, because I don't watch things at home. Um, like if it, it might take me two or three days to watch a two hour movie because I watch it in chunks, but I know if I go to the theaters and sit my ass down, I will sit there for two or three hours, however long it takes. Uh, and I, I think it's just a thing of being older and having ADD. Like it, it's so hard for me to focus on stuff like that. But anyway, uh, sort of back on topics. So have you ever heard of the company Evil Genius Games? I've heard of them, yes. I can't place any products. Uh, they they do uh, a lot of... They did Everyday Heroes, which is... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, I remember this where I saw it. They're the ones that made the the tabletop that Netflix basically said, this is ours now, and didn't that's, release it. Yes, that's what we're going <laughs> to... That's what we're about to talk about. Um, but yeah, they're, so they're a gaming company. They make uh, Everyday Heroes, which is... It's Dungeons & Dragons 5e compatible. Uh thing they did and they made like kong skull island total recall pacific rim and a bunch of other uh, ips that they've made tabletop games for you so, skipped over, just just read the whole list because oh it's that, an amazing that's, list that's, that's just the list that's I've, I've got in this article okay I don't you have, want you want the yeah, full list just, yeah, i got go, it go for it so they created everyday heroes which is your 80s i would call it more of an 80s action uh tabletop role-playing game okay um i've seen it demoed once um and it it is quite fun um and then their modules are like their expansions to everyday heroes starts with escape from new york oh that's the, right yeah yeah the crow kong skull island pacific rim highlander total recall rambo and ending it off universal soldier Hell yeah. And every single one of those things has like different classes and builds and stuff like that for every single one. So, yeah, yeah. It, it was pretty fantastic. Uh, so you just literally um, you literally just named my childhood right there. <laughs> <laughs> like all of those movies I grew up watching. Uh, yeah. So anyway, they, they you know, they had all of this IP. Well, Zack Snyder, uh, the director who did Justice League and you know all the other movies. Uh, he did. He he's done some good stuff. He did three hundred. He did Watchmen. Uh, so like he did one good thing, one fantastic thing, and then I forget about everything else because yeah, he did three hundred. He did Watchmen. All right, enough said. Uh, but anyway, he has a new movie coming out on Netflix that's broken up into a two part series called Rebel Moon. I have watched the trailer for this. It looks fantastic. You know, we have to wait and see, obviously, because it's it's Zack Snyder. Who the fuck knows? But it looks kind of like a cross. Uh, it kind of it, it's space opera. Like it's very kind of Dune esque, or even possibly Star Wars to a lesser extent. Uh, it's sci fi, uh, flying around, you know, having whole sorts of wars and shit like that. And it looks like a really cool and epic movie. So, Evil Genius had gotten a hold of Netflix, and they had come to an agreement for them to create the tabletop role-playing game for this world, uh, for Rebel Moon. Uh, in, the pro- uh, in the process of that, they had completely expanded upon the setting, which is what Zack Snyder wanted them to do. Uh, like he, it, was, you know, it was his idea to get this thing turned into an RPG. He wanted that done, and that was actually part of the deal with Netflix, for him mm-hmm. to make this thing was they have to also get it done as a tabletop role playing game. So, uh, Evil Genius Games created a 430 page player guide and a 337 page game master's guide. Uh, and, like, that's that's years of work to do that. That's 
not, well, and that's a year's worth of work to do that. That's not a simple process. They they completed it in like three months. Uh, I think the number was around. It was it was within the course of a year. Uh, it was. They started in December and had it done had it done in March. Uh, May, May, May is when the contract got terminated. Uh, no, they were in the final stages of editing in May. That's what okay. I'm reading. That's what I'm reading right now. Okay. Uh, so that's that that's a quick that's a quick turnaround for technical documentation. But again, they built off of what they had before. So yeah, I, I mean, and they as well, you know, like Zack Snyder gave them the script. He gave them all the info. They had everything mm-hmm. already sort of there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, everything seemed to be moving smoothly. Uh, they displayed a few pieces of artwork um, at Gamma, which is the uh, gamers show. I don't know the, I don't know what Gamma actually stands for, but I know it's a gaming product show. Uh, they showed it off to sort of build hype and industry buzz. And they actually had two Netflix employees with them when that happened. Like, like the Netflix guys were the ones showing off the artwork. Uh, and it was like cover artwork and sample characters. So a little while later, Netflix decides that Evil Genius Games has broken contract and that they are going to cancel it. So naturally, they're throwing a lawsuit at them for you know breach of contract, etc. Um, lawsuit adds the, uh, let's see, I guess I could read this last bit of the article, might help. Uh, Netflix halted work on the tabletop RPG as a result, stopping the release of Evil Genius Rebel Moon game. In addition, Evil Genius alleges that Netflix sent a follow-up letter in June attempting to hijack the World Bible created for the RPG by claiming it solely it belongs solely and exclusively to Netflix. Based on this letter, it became clear that Netflix was simply using the alleged breach and termination to hijack the plaintiff's intellectual property and prevent them from releasing the game. That's what the lawsuit states. Yeah, I, I put a link in our podcast chat if you're on a Discord to basically take a look at the 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 breakdown of all the details that kind of Jay just surmised there um, from their perspective. Now, this again, it's just to be kind of like middle ground. This is their perspective. This is what they presented to everybody. I feel for them really bad, um, but I unfortunately they may not have you know a box to stand on essentially because I'm sure that contract was very strict and just effed up in so many ways that they may or not have caught and doing that one little thing ruined it for them. I hope they win. I hope personally hope they win their lawsuit and they're able to continue publishing the, yeah the, the work because they did an extraordinary amount of work in a very short amount of time. And they're, and, a, small, they're a small company, like something like this could, it could, in the company like i don't know the amount of money they're making but when you dump all of your resources into putting a product out that quickly um and you're expecting a nice payday out of it and then you get nothing except all of your stuff stolen and that and that's the really weird part because i would think that if they terminated the contract it would have just basically been a flat okay we're not doing this anymore with you goodbye uh things are done I don't think they can still claim that work unless there's some really fucking fucked up verbiage in there. I'm not a lawyer Mm -hmm. in that contract where they get everything that they worked on, which I don't know why they would do that because my understanding is they still use everyday heroes as a basis for the tabletop. And like all the other products that they had, you know, it it was an addition to them kind of like the Rambo one and Highlander one is. So I would be very kind of remiss if they, now are starting to claim that, hey, we own Everyday Heroes rule set as well, too, because you can't really trademark a rule set. I don't know. This is going to be this is going to be a very interesting case to watch. And like I said, I hope that they are successful on their side. Yeah, I, I'm um, not. I'm also not positive. I, I don't have the details of it. I'm not sure that uh, the Rebel Moon is an Everyday Heroes game like it might be its own game. Well, they created they created a world Bible. Um yeah, which well, was vastly yeah. expanded on by Snyder. Yep. Um, a 430 page player's guide and a 337 uh, um, game master's guide. Right. Um, I remember reading somewhere, like I said, they, they worked on it for five months. And the part of the reason they could get it done so quickly 
it's good they, they they were able to focus a lot on the world building aspect of it because they didn't have to work on the rules aspect of it because they were basically borrowing from their own IP. Yeah, and if that's the case, that that cuts down on the time a lot for sure. Yeah. So, um, all I gotta say right now is it's a very shitty situation for them. Check out uh, every uh, Evil Genius games. Like I seen the system, I haven't played it. But it does look fantastic. It's got a lot of IPs I want, so maybe yeah. we'll stream it a few times or something. And, uh, but and, and, and buy the book. Ho- hopefully, I really do hope that them and Netflix are able to work this thing out to uh, to everybody's agreement. You know, where everybody's happy with this thing. Because personally, uh, I would like to actually see this game come out. Uh, I am definitely interested in the show, and uh, that may- me being interested in a show makes me interested in a game. So, yeah. So there, there was a there was a sci-fi game years ago. Um, let's see if we can find it real quick. Yeah, the whole thing is kind of shitty and you know, defiance. Some, have have defiance. I talked about defiance at all? Uh, it does not ring a bell. Maybe if you start talking about it, then it might. Okay, so there was a there was a show on the Sci-Fi Channel called Defiance. Okay, okay. and. At the same time the show was coming out, okay, they created an MMO called Defiance as well, okay? So essentially, you could participate in the world that the show was about, and the events in the show were basically the storyline that happened in uh, the game, okay? Yeah, so you, did, you, could, you, you definitely have told me about this before, yeah. but it's been a long time. You, so you could play the MMO and like if your guild was the first guild to kind of like beat a big bad boss and save the day, they would then mention you and say what you did in the show. Huh. Now, all I know is, is that it like lasted for like a year back in like 2014. Yeah. And I don't know if they ever actually were able to do that. The servers are closed as of 2020. Oh, no, there are, there are three seasons. Oh, yeah. OK. They, so they, maybe... they're, yeah, there's 39 episodes. Like I said, I'm not sure how much of the game actually got carried over into the show, um, but it was it was it was, it was interesting. It's, it's definitely an interesting concept. No, that, I, like that's kind of a neat idea. Um, trying to blend the two together, and that's yeah. a lot of a lot of companies are trying that. Like that's literally what we're talking about right now with the whole uh, yeah. them releasing Rebel Moon. You know, they're they're trying to blend the movie with the uh, RPG at the same time. Um, I know, like I, it did mention in the, in one of the articles I had read that Snyder wanted the RPG to come out to, you know, just sort of keep it going to build the universe, which he definitely sort of has long-term plans for that setting. So if the show does well, then maybe you get spinoff shows, then you start getting all sorts of other IP that gets released for it. Yeah. Like I said, I, I wish them the best. I hope they get through that legal matter. I don't know if they have the money to fight Netflix. Yeah, you're talking billion plus you know dollar company versus a company that's probably making a million or less a year. So, yeah. Oh well. Yep, such is the way it is. Um, so last thing I wanted to talk about was the I, I definitely had sent you that video, but I'm sure you never watched it. Um, but I wanted to talk about something called Ultimate Dungeon Terrain. And you can go ahead and Google that word specifically. And I had seen a video on it, and I am absolutely just fascinated by this idea. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's basically a a twenty inch or so circular piece that you sit on the table for terrain. Uh, it is okay. your it's your battle map. And this will not work with Pathfinder. It will not work with. 5e it is designed for the, like osr it's designed for things that have very sort of loose rules uh especially when it comes to movement in pathfinder and DD, they use you know the, the squares of five foot movement uh it's very meticulous in how you are able to operate on the battlefield but a lot of the okay. os a lot of the osr games like dungeon crawl classics uh the one we were talking about the other day that we did the little online thing troika um uh, just any of the older uh, older OSR style of gaming, it's very loose on its movement rules. So this is a simple way to sort of just tell where everybody is at on the battlefield. So it's a 20-inch circular piece. 
and in the middle, there's another circle. Everything within that center circle is considered in melee range of each other. Everything, okay. out, everything outside of that center circle is considered to be at, at long range, at range. And if you're outside of the actual you know, 20 inch circle completely, you're just not in combat. Very simple to keep up with. Um, so if I have a spell that, you know, oh, I've got burning hands. Well, it's got a range on it. I could stand at range and I could hit whatever I wanted within the centralized area with it because I'm at range. Um, if the things in the middle want to bring somebody who's outside of range or outside of their melee range into range, you know, then you just move to the edge of it effectively and pull them into the center circle. So you can very easily be brought back into melee range if, yeah, if you need to, or if the um, you know say you're fighting a monster and that monster wants to get to the wizard. Well, he just fucking goes to the wizard. Wizard gets pulled back into the center. Very simple. It it's not super technical, but it speeds things up. You're able to get through the combats. You're able to do the role playing more. You're able to focus on the story more and worry less about the eight bazillion freaking rules that D and D and Pathfinder and games like that have. But without so, the rules, I'm nobody. I know. How can you role play without the rules? You mean I have to pretend? Yeah, I know, right? I, I ran Pathfinder this weekend, and we had, you know, there's naturally some rules things and everything, but. I've, the last two times I've run it, there's barely been any combat at all. Last night, there was zero combat. Every Like, they managed to just talk their way through everything. Because they role-played for four hours. <laughs> I remember one time when you had stopped playing the Star Wars game at that point in time, when I was playing with all of our yep, grumpy yep. friends from, from our LARP. Yep. And they spent four fucking hours shopping. I just oh, sat yeah. there, my chair muted eating fucking chipotle just listening to them ramble on like oh. should i buy this 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 turn interceptor to this i'm just like hum, nom, 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 hum. yeah <laughs> see that's that's what you want to avoid in a role-playing game like but i get i get it but that's what what's their pants man that's what they I, love I know, I know you as a dm you give what the players love and our guys like to shop with the money that they steal i mean earn yep I get it. Like when I switch <laughs> when I switch from Five E to Pathfinder, I had to let my players do a shopping trip, uh, and the shopping trip took an hour or less, um, because I want to, I want to role play. I want to actually progress things forward. So, I mean, when I play Baldur's Gate, like, yeah, I have to spend like two or three hours, pro- probably like every I know, other day. And it drives me Organi- fucking nuts. <laughs> organizing my stash and selling all the stuff and everything. I just carry I just carry around all the arrow scrolls and potions that I'm ever going to need and sell everything else that's not an upgrade. What I could use is an elixir. The credits are rolling and never use the elixir. Oh, I, I'm at the very <laughs> ass end of the game right now. I'm literally at the end of the game, and my inventory is like you know 80 elixirs that I'm <laughs> uh, that I'm never going to get to use because you can only have one active at a time. So, so. Just to kind of build on top of that, I, I'm playing through the game on the harder difficulty. Yeah. I just got to a point versus a monster that does a lot of AoE lightning damage. And for the first time in all the playthroughs I've done, I'm actually using an elixir versus lightning resistance. Because, <laughs> oh my god, does it hurt so bad. I, You know, I hadn't, I hadn't thought about that. I guess some of that stuff that I'm never going to use might actually be useful on the harder difficulties. Because <laughs> yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I've got lightning, fire, poison, psychic resistance. I have universal resistance potions, and I've never used any of them. So just, just to kind of be a little vague, the fight started with this creature. The creature basically stood up, went, Mm-mm, I'm first in initiative. <laughs> And then, boom, my party, two of them are down, one of them has like three hit points left, and the other one is just straight dead. Yeah. So I was like, oh yeah. no. Yeah, okay. So trying it, trying it at the harder level might, might be a challenge. Uh, maybe maybe we can do that as another uh, stream after we finish this stream. Whenever I'm, we already, lo- I'm already looking for mods to make the game even harder and deadlier and more skimpy with underwear. Yes, more skippy with underwear. Apparently, there's a mod that adds like 50 new races and a bunch of new uh, subclasses and everything. 
Yeah, they basically make because like goblins are already pretty varied and stuff like that. And minotaurs mm-hmm. are out there, and all the other monsters that are player races. They just added all them as yeah. options, yeah. essentially. Yep. So, but anyway, if you if you're into the OSR stuff, look it up. Ultimate Dungeon Terrain might find it really useful. There's some great videos on how to make it, and some great videos on how to actually use it. Um. You can, you know, you go into a new room and bam, you can quickly set it up. Just throw a couple of door minis in there and a little altar that you're sacrificing somebody on. You don't have nice. to, don't have to do all this massive setup ahead of time. Nice. Um, so I was doing a little more looking and uh, found out that you can download the PDF for Everyday Heroes for free. Oh shit! I'm about to um, do that right now. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm putting them in our, in our podcast chat, so you can grab yep. them from there. And all the players out there, you can also grab it from there and um, get it that way. Yeah, maybe support these guys. Sounds yep, like they can use it right up. now. So. Yeah. All right, well, that's all I got for this week. You got any more topics? Um, not really. I'm, I'm very proud of my wife with uh, her trying to uh, persuade a creature. Okay, so this, this, my last little quick story. All right. A little bit of background. Um, they're going to a haunted manor. The party that was was sent there before the NPC party that died, pretty much their leader is a, is a female named Ella, who basically was killed and beheaded in the manor. And since then, you first meet her when she's a head on a stump, <sighs> on a log, well outside the manor. And when you meet her, she's pretty like pretty coherent, sad that she lost her party. Um, wants you to get in there and see what happened to them. See if they're still alive, you know, and to change a few things because, um, you know, just the party setup that we had. And the more you bring her through the, through the, the haunted manor, the kind of crazier she becomes because she's closer to the source that killed her. She's becoming more and more of an aberration. Right. And that's something I kind of really built up with it like i had her like grow spider legs and walk around and have multi layers of teeth and kind of really go crazy eyes and they were just blowing through the bosses um like the ball of hands they just destroyed it easy so i had up the difficulty of the final boss uh, because they weren't going into it weak pretty they were pretty much fresh Mm -hmm. so i i had her the head reattach herself to the body that they had found earlier and sneak into the fight midway and attempt to attack the party to kind of help even out the odds. Um, so my wife was like, she's like, I really don't want to shoot her. I feel sorry for her. I feel sad for her. I wish I could just convince her to help us and free her at the same time. I was like, all right, well go ahead and give me a persuasion check then. And she's like, yeah, but I don't want it to fail completely. Like her fear was, is that there was no possible way of persuading this creature. You never know. To, you try, to help. Yeah. Well, you never know to your try. And my, my response back to her was, I wouldn't have said to give me a persuasion check if I didn't already have a DC in mind. Yeah. All right. And I guess that kind of happens a lot, especially in, in, in my games, I'm very, combat heavy mm-hmm. but like if i call out for a persuasion check or investigation check or hey you want to try a charisma check there i set a dc and i think her fear may have been that that dc would have been too hard for for it to happen and they're level six so i did make it difficult she is being possessed by this greater power that's in space you know yep. so i always i thought like okay what's what's a difficult but not nigh impossible DC. My mind went 22, 20, 18. That's the numbers that hit my head. Okay. Um, and I settled at 18. Um, at level six, 18 is challenging. Yeah, it's challenging, but it's not impossible. Yep. And she fucking rolls like a 26 with oh, a yeah. persuasion. Yeah, like <laughs> that, that would have beat all three that I thought. <laughs> yeah. So she persuaded it and like, you know, I explained that she kind of saw the crazy eyes go away for a second. She just has this quick moment of clarity that, oh, my God, I'm in this insane monster now. And she helped fight the, the bad guy at the end and win. 
Yeah. So got it. You got to try. Yeah, I'm I'm real real bad as a DM about remembering persuasion checks or any of that stuff. I I just role play it and I don't think about making people do the the checks and it with Pathfinder and D&D it's like you're supposed to make those checks. You're supposed to have that kind of stuff going on. Pathfinder actually has abilities and things like that that can adjust how how much you know, uh, of it. Yeah, if somebody hates you and then you say the right word, make the right check, they might just dislike you or, you know, even possibly higher. And I just don't use that system because I don't think about it. I just role play everything. Yeah. I, need, and I get I, that. Yep. I got to I got to get away from Pathfinder and D&D and start running more of the OSR stuff because it's honestly, it really does seem like more my speed. Yeah lazy yeah yeah lazy lazy's good that's a good term for it because i don't i don't want to have to learn all these rules and remember them i'm getting old i want to learn rules <laughs> what am i a rules person yeah i just want to play Full a game rules? God damn it. let somebody else read the rules i'm just here to play anyway um, yeah all right goodbye craig bye greg